Hi, I'm Cynthia Clark. As a soulmate palmist, I've discovered a system using hand analysis to identify your soulmate matches. Greater love is possible for you. There are six keys to soulmate attraction. There are 10 heart chambers in your hands that show you exactly what you need to heal. I can help you untangle dating confusion and work with the vibrational energy to change your vibration. True love exists for you if you claim it. Join me at loveinyourhands.com and find soulmate love fast. Thank you for tuning in to Love In Your Hands with Cynthia Clark, the podcast about how to live life with love, passion, and purpose. This podcast is sponsored by loveinyourhands.com, the place to find long-lasting love through the merging of ancient science, modern technology, and quantum physics. Tired of superficial connections? Go to loveinyourhands.com and start your free Align to Your Soulmate five-day challenge where you could win a $20 Amazon gift card. Now here's your host, Cynthia Clark, certified palm reading consultant, love compatibility coach, author, and speaker. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Cynthia Clark, and I am so excited that I get to share with you ways that you can live life with more love, passion, and purpose, because that's what it's all about, and in times like these, we need it more than ever. <laughs> so thank you so much for listening. I so appreciate all of you. And I am really excited today to talk about a topic that is very near and dear to my heart, and it has to do with holistic living. Uh, before we get into that, I want to start out with a little palm reading lesson because, of course, it, ev everything relates back to our bodies and to our hands, and our hands actually reflect aspects of ourselves that we may or may not be aware of. So one way that you can actually tell if you're under uh, stress, okay, because this is something that will show up and you're worried about your health. Um, there are things that will show up in your hands that will reflect that. And I would say something really to be aware of is when your fingers actually bend. So when, when you have your hands and you, you put up your hand like this and you, you hold your fingers out, Take a look and see if any of your fingers have any natural bend to them, because that's going to represent that you've been under a certain amount of stress for a long period of time. So, and this is not for people with arthritis, okay? This is just if you're healthy or you think you're healthy. Um, take a look at those fingers, because each finger actually represents a different aspect of yourself. So, for example, if your index finger is bending this is how you look at yourself and so if it's starting to bend it's showing that you're having a skewed view of yourself or you're not living by your ideals and it will start to twist so very interesting to take a look at these things if your middle finger is bending that has to do with your work duties and responsibilities it could show that you worry about money or you worry about your job uh, if your ring finger is bending, this is your finger of how you show yourself to the world. It's your creativity finger. And if it's bending, it's saying that you're either not using your creativity in the capacity that you could, or maybe you're not giving yourself enough time to actually explore your own uniqueness. And if your little finger is bending, well, that little guy, he is all about communications. And so if that starts to bend, well, that means that your communication is starting to skew and you might actually be lying to yourself or to others. And it can turn into a lack of trust. And at its worst, it can be um, somebody who starts to, to manipulate. So very interesting to take a look at those fingers and they, we want them to stand up nice and tall. <laughs> the good news is they can change. So as you change your inner world, it will reflect back through your fingers. So 
that's today's palm reading lesson. I hope you found it interesting. And, and by the way, don't freak out if you do have a bend in your finger. Almost everybody has at least one. That is a little bit crooked, <laughs> but it's just to build awareness for you, okay? So today we have a very special guest. I'm very excited to bring her on. Her name is Susan Obajiski. She is a wellness coach. And right here in Sedona, where I am as well, which is awesome, and she has more than 30 years of experience in medicine and body work. Uh, she has advanced training in numerous treatment techniques, including energy healing and advanced body work modalities. She offers metaphysical and business consulting services and teaches holistic workshops, including Grieving with Grace, Holistic Living, Reiki, Pranic Breathwork, Guided Imagery, uh, Meditation, and Other Techniques, and is an author of a trilogy of metaphysical fiction novels and one novella, and is a contributing author for, book, for the book entitled Sedona Awakenings. So welcome to the show, Susan. Thank you. How are you this morning? <laughs> I'm doing great. Good. I'm, I'm starting to perk up. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime I talk about hands, it always wakes me up. So, <laughs> yeah, 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 and we, we certainly need a, a lot of tips right now to live uh, uh, our best lives and to be well. Yeah, so so let's just start out with a little uh, backstory for from you on how did you decide to get started on the holistic path? What what? what well, I started I started in uh, allopathic medicine and modern medicine uh, as an EMT and. Uh, Back in the old days, what they used to call a medical assistant, which is now uh, formally trained as a physician's assistant. Back then, it was more of an internship with a doctor. And what really uh, moved me to change the holistic medicine was even seeing at that point, which is going back decades, uh, that there was really no focus on holism or um, the entire human being when we were treating it tended to be going toward things like specialization. I really wanted to be able to look at ways to treat people in their entire form. So if you look at things like a holism it being the study of any particular thing, in this case, the human body and mind, it's really looking at um, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual well-being, and then treating the person as a whole human being because we really can't segment it. Mm. Well, that makes perfect sense. So, so let's talk a little bit about that, because um, I think a lot of people, you know, they, they feel like, okay, I'm going to go to the doctor, and I'm going to do what my doctor says, and they don't talk about, you know, your diet, or, you know, maybe you right. should change your exercise. They just talk about, okay, well, let's see what pills we can prescribe for you in order mm -hmm. for you to feel less symptomatic in whatever it is that you're feeling. So... So how, how would somebody maybe get started right, in right. this? Well, well, I think the first thing is kind of uh, changing our mindset, especially in the United States. We are very uh, aligned with modern medicine, which means that we go to the doctor with a symptom uh, that might be back pain or it might be perhaps it's depression. It could be uh, anything, a rash, a skin rash, and that doctor, is typically treating, listening to, and treating the symptom. So one of the things that we need to start looking at to get started with it is the mindset, is to look at everything that's going on. And we tend to kind of develop coping mechanisms over a period of time so that we're not really even thinking about the headaches or the things that we may already have thrown into the basket there and we may be already dealing with. We're just looking at um, that one symptom going to the doctor. So the first mindset change I think you have to make is to really do some very careful and thoughtful analysis of what you do want to change, how you do feel, what's good, what's bad in your lifestyle and those things that you are looking to improve or sustain as you get older. Uh, because when you go to a regular doctor, as you said, they will typically be looking to give you drugs or they might be doing surgery. For those people out there who have done something like go to a naturopath or uh, perhaps a traditional Chinese medical practitioner, what we know from comparing that to modern medicine 
is that their intake, our intake as uh, metaphysical or wellness healers will always be much more um, comprehensive. So we will be asking a lot of questions about diet and nutrition and exercise and uh, emotional stability. What, what is your job like? Are you under stress? Those kinds of intakes can take an hour or two hours to do because we're asking all kinds of questions that we hope will give us a fuller picture. So changing our mindset as the patient or the client coming in is equally important because what you demand from or expect from healthcare practitioners is pretty much what you're going to get. So you may need to think outside the box and go to more than one person. I'm not suggesting by any means that we not go to a medical doctor if we have a problem, but you can certainly consider complementary treatments and alternatives, and you would want to choose a medical doctor who's open to you or doing that so that they're not fighting you every step of the way. Hmm. So could somebody who has any type of problem see a holistic person like yourself, um, or is it limited to just specific types of problems, or how, how do you look at it that way? So the door is open to everybody. Um, what we will say is very much like what a chiropractor might say if you come in to have a chiropractic treatment and they do a series of x-rays and they examine you, they may also suggest that you seek a particular type of specialist like an orthopedic surgeon or that you do physical therapy. So very much like that when we're doing uh, wellness coaching and practicing we, if we don't have all the tools in our toolkit, we are at least expected to be familiar with all of those tools, enough so that we can refer somebody to the appropriate people. So the, what, what may end up happening is that you may develop a team of people that you look to, to together as a team to be able to coach you and help you or treat you in some way to get you back to where you need to be. So it isn't always a one-person thing. Mm. Okay, that makes sense. So people, um, can they expect to see results any faster or, uh, you know, how, what is the typical time frame for somebody to have a problem and then to see a result? Well, you know, I, I think it's like anything. Every one of us is different. And one of the principal factors of holism is looking at that uniqueness in the person. So if you're 20 years old or 18 years old and you go to someone with a problem, your body, mind, spirit may be in a position where it just needs a little bit of tweaking. There are a few things you can do like perhaps not eating as much packaged food or um, you know, improving your diet, improving your sleep habits, uh, learning a meditation technique to address issues. That may be a one-time thing. In that case, going out and making those changes should be relatively easy and you should start to see results. For those of us that are older and have long-standing injuries or wellness issues, uh, perhaps issues that are not actually going to be cured, if you will, but will be uh, treated so that you can have the best quality of life possible, those things may take a lot longer because it didn't take us two days to get that sick. It took us a long time. So it may take us a long time to get better. And what I, this is probably a good time to mention the fact that what I often see, and I think a lot of holistic practitioners will say the same thing, is that we, especially in the US, are, um, we want to look for alternatives now. Alternative uh, practices in medicine have become popular. But our mindset is still in the modern medicine world, if you will. So we go in saying, doctors are not really helping me, or I'm on medication, but I don't feel as good as I want to feel. And when you start talking about anything other than putting a pill in your mouth, people don't necessarily want to accept that responsibility to make themselves well. And what I've always said to people is, if you're not at least as concerned about your own well-being and health as I am, this is not going to work because the changes that you need to make, uh, you know, we're not going to introduce them all at one time. If these are, if there are a myriad of problems, we're going to introduce them a little at a time so that you can improve, but you do need to commit to those changes 
And if you don't, uh, you know, those, those things that you're complaining about are probably going to stay complaints. Exactly. Yeah. It's like going back to the fingers. It's like, you can't go to the doctor and have them, you know, twist it back straight. You know, it's, no. <laughs> it's got to come from inside of you. <laughs> and looking at the source is often a difficult thing. It may be a bit easier physically, but not always. Sometimes people have gotten multiple diagnoses. But, you know, emotionally or spiritually, it can certainly be very difficult to look inside. We're not taught to do that in our culture. And that's a whole other um, recommendation of training and education that somebody might take on, which is to learn more about how to do those things so that you can get your fingers straightened out or whatever it is that you're looking to do. Right, exactly. So, so can we talk a little bit about maybe some general wellness tips that people who might be listening could start to implement? Sure. Yeah, I, I think one of the things that may be helpful, um, and certainly if I don't address uh, what you're looking for, let me know after I finished it. But one of the things that might be helpful is let's just look at a few things generally that somebody can do in the, the four prongs of, of holism. So if we're looking at something like physical, someone who has longstanding back problems or someone who's under a lot of stress, someone who has an injury, um, you may be in the physical domain, you may be looking at things like um, massage therapy, sports massage or specialized treatments like myofascial techniques, which um, engage the fascia in the, uh, in the body. Think of that as kind of a saran wrap that's underneath all of the skin over the muscles. And if that gets tightened um, or restricted, it can restrict motion. So you might be doing something like that. From a physical perspective, you might also be doing things like uh, an exercise regimen for you know, cardio health. You might be taking classes in martial arts to help your balance and your strength, your core strength. Um, there's all kinds of different things that we would recommend specifically to what the person is capable of doing physically, including swimming, you know, things like that. Um, when we get into the other aspects of the physical domain, we would also be looking at nutrition. So one is to, to the extent possible, stop eating a lot of packaged and fast foods, start eating um, fresher things. So more vegetables, and I know that doctors will often tell you this true too, but you know, green vegetables, uh, fruits, if you're eating meats, those meats should hopefully be grass-fed with no antibiotics. Those kinds of simple changes are going to be important to getting your body into a position where it can be as strong as possible. And People will often say when it comes to buying organic or healthy foods that it's more expensive, but it really isn't. It's about when you're eating, how much you're eating, what you're eating, and what you'll find is as you reduce a lot of things like lots of sugar and salt from your diet, you will, by, by your natural body's response, you will not be eating as much, and the foods that you're buying are probably not going to cost you more than the bulk of food you would be buying else, elsewhere. So right. for physical, and if, I was going to say, and sense. if it keeps you from taking a pill too, it could really help, you know, like if you end up having to take a, a medicine that you, you know, wouldn't need to take from if you ate those natural foods, that could save you a ton of money right there. It, it can. And one example of that is really um, many, many people are on things like Lipitor and things for high cholesterol. Prickly pear juice is readily available. If you don't live in Arizona, you can still get it. It can get shipped to you or to your local health food store if you want to ask them to order it. And it is, um, many people have heard of red rice yeast as a supplement for cholesterol, which works on some people, but not everyone. Prickly pear juice is, uh, I have not found anyone yet that it doesn't work on. And all you really need is uh, like an ounce of it, like a little jigger full every day. Um, and it will, you will start to see results within two to three months on your uh, cholesterol. So things like that can be done without going to see someone. Um, I'm not discouraging people from looking online, but it is good to get 
someone that can guide you a little bit just so that you're not grasping at straws, you know, so that you're not floundering and trying everything that's out there and getting frustrated because it's not working for you. Mm, makes sense. So from the mental perspective, um, you know, we would be looking at things like meditation, um, additional education on brain retraining, which is really important as a coping mechanism for somebody who's had a traumatic brain injury, who might have been in the military or has had a car accident, that kind of thing. Um, you know, learning breathing techniques that can also inform your physical health because you're getting your circulation going in a better way, but you're getting oxygen to your brain in that respect. Uh, there are things online that are great for the mental as well, things like Lumosity, which is a brain training kind of exercise thing you can do every day. Um, and so those are things that we look to to calm the mental aspect and focus you as well. In the emotional uh, realm, you know, we're looking, we're asking questions about things like job stress and relationships. <clears throat> are there changes that need to be made there? And those are things that only you can decide, but they may in fact be, and if you have a negative situation, they will certainly be affecting your health otherwise, physically and mentally and emotionally. So it's important to be honest about those things you're probably going to want to try to get some counseling. If your health insurance does not cover therapy sessions, you can reach out to your county services. There, uh, there are counselors that are available to talk to you about specific issues that may relate to family or relationships. Um, drug issues obviously are going to affect you across the board. So getting the right kind of counseling I think is important. We do a lot of breath work and guided imagery in the emotional realm, which also can affect the mental realm. So there, if you want to uh, look out there online for things like uh, guided imagery for a specific issue that you're experiencing, like stress or sleep issues, weight loss, any of those things, there, there are excellent CDs and downloads on those types of guided imagery meditations. And with frequent use, those things can begin to repattern your brain and your emotions. So that's an important thing as well. Um, in the spiritual realm, if you are not religious, but you are a spiritual being, uh, you know, reading about religions and thought processes of spirituality in the world can help you to broaden your perspective. Also just groups, um, free thinking groups and groups of people that get together and talk about Philosophy and spirituality can help you to broaden your understanding. In this country, we often forget the spiritual aspect of ourselves. And whether it's religious or not, understanding what your perception of why we are here looks like and how and why we interact with other people and what our obligations are to each other is important. So the spiritual aspect should also be explored. So those are kind of some generic things that we might be looking at. There are obviously very specific things we look to for people when we know what their issues are, but those are things everybody can give some thought to and begin to develop a plan, sit down and, and kind of align all four aspects, the physical, the mental, the emotional, and the spiritual, and write them down and say, what do I think my issues are in these areas? And then seek the appropriate help for whatever it is you think you need. Hmm, that sounds really great. So I love this advice because, yeah, this is so important, looking at all the different aspects of your, your being because right. you're right. It's not just one thing. And, and what, what I like to tell people, too, is that there's a reason why you're having a problem. You know, exactly. <laughs> it's not to beat you up or to punish you. It's, it has nothing to do with that. It, it, it is trying to tell you something so that you can get better and be better than ever. So, right. Yeah. yeah. And I'm glad you brought that up. I think that that's a, a, certainly a discussion for another day because there's so much to that, that point that you just made. But it is important to understand that because as we look at, at uh, that holistic approach to our health. We want to do that um, with an eye toward being the best that we can be and improving our lives so that we can fulfill our purpose, but we don't want to do it 
with an attitude of being the patient or the victim, which is often the approach and the mindset that we've gotten into in this country is that if you're sick, if you have a problem with a relationship, there's something wrong with you or with your approach to life. And that is not a mindset that's helpful when we're trying to make those kinds of changes. We need to do it with an attitude that says, uh, this is something I'm learning from, this is something that has taught me, and I'm a better person for that. Absolutely. And then a lot of times people end up teaching it to others. You know, you look at people right. who are cancer survivors, and then they end up helping so many other people, you know, get through that experience. So, right. yeah. yeah, so there's, there yeah. are definitely good things that come out of bad situations. So, right. yeah. So and I, I would say that one of the things you, you want to think about too, if you're putting together a plan is to be realistic about the challenges that you're going to face, because you will, there will be things, whether it's self-discipline or people who are, are, you know, whether knowingly or unknowingly sort of getting in your way of accomplishing the goals because they're not pleased or they don't understand why you have to make these changes. So that might be for a relationship issue or it could just be your friend wants to go to dinner at their favorite fast food place and you're not eating that food anymore. So they're maybe going to try to trip you up a little. So really being honest with yourself about the challenges and the issues and to your point about helping other people, whether you're a cancer survivor or you're doing this, is surrounding yourself with a support network of people who have been through what you've been through or just really want you to be, be the best you can be and are willing to help you because you are going to have days where you feel like you're not making any progress. And that's just part of life, whether it's holistic, you know, a wellness plans we're putting in place or I'm in a job and I thought I would was doing great and my manager calls me in and says you know there are some ways that we should improve your your performance we all face those things so when you're looking at these challenges and issues if you're honest about them you're going to anticipate them and be prepared hmm, absolutely so thank you this has been really fun talking to you and talking about wellness i love this i love this topic so um i was wondering how people can reach you and if you have any offers that you'd like to make to uh, listeners. Sure, yeah. So uh, the offer I'd like to make for your listeners is um, if you are listening to this and watching it and you want to reach out to do uh, some personalized exploration, um, you can email me within 30 days of listening to this and we will uh, exchange a couple of emails. You can tell me about the issues that you'd like to address. It, it's, it's going to be short and sweet. It will be a free consultation, but it will give you some, I will give you some ways that I think you can address some of the issues. Um, and then you can take it from there. Uh, as far as people reaching me, if they have questions, probably the easiest way to do that is through my email address, which is my first and last name at Gmail. So it's Susan Obajeski, S-U-S-A-N, O-B-I-J-I-S-K-I at gmail.com. And I do usually respond within 24 hours. So if you have any questions about this or treatment modalities or anything else that's on your mind, you don't necessarily need to reach me just to ask for a counseling session. It can just be a quick question. I would be more than happy to answer those. Mm, okay, wonderful. Well, thank you so much. I so appreciate you and all the wonderful work that you're doing out there. And you're yeah, thank you listeners for tuning in. Uh, you know that we love you and we're here for you and we want you to be able to live life with love, passion, and purpose. Uh, that's what it's all about. <laughs> and have a wonderful day, everyone. We'll, we'll talk to you again really soon. Okay, take care.